Have you ever seen anything on the internet and wanted to be able to have it as your own data to be able to analyze it and also share it, but also manipulate it? Well, Excel has a really amazing tool that allows you to get data from external sources. Now, as long as those sources are in table format, you are good to go. So if we take a look at a couple of websites, number one, you're going to see one that's on Wikipedia and another one that's on IMDb. Here's the one that's IMDb. And you can see I have the top 250 movies. Now, you can notice that I have the name of the movie. I've got the year it was made. I can also see the rating, the number of ratings, etc. But I'd like to actually download all of this stuff, put it into Excel, and be able to manipulate it on my own. You'll also see here that I have this Wikipedia site that also has stuff inside of a table. And this is by population, by country. And I'd like to also look at this data. So let's go ahead and see how we can get this data in Excel and also, again, how we can manipulate it. Now, just to let you know, we're going to not only get this data using Excel, but we're going to use another tool called Power Query to be able to transform the data and essentially normalize it so it can be ready for Excel so we can manipulate it very easily. So let's go ahead and go back to Excel. So I'm going to start off here in my Home tab and also notice here I'm on a blank workbook. So all I do now is just choose Data and then on the left hand side, you see this group called Get and Transform Data. And you'll see that there is this option here for From Web. When I click on that, you're going to see a very simple option is going to pop up, allowing me to then just put in the URL. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply copy the URL for that IMDb website and then paste it in. I've got it copied. And now, very simply, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. And you're going to see there it is, imdb.com forward slash chart forward slash top. I click OK and then just wait for it. It's going to start doing its connection. And now opens up something to this thing called the navigator. Now, wait for it a little bit. And you're going to see that on the left hand side, we're going to have these tables as it analyzes all the different content and the structure of that website. Now, don't be too concerned if it's taking a little bit of time. It'll get there eventually. Some websites take a little bit less time than others. Great, so here we are. Now, nothing too extraordinary happens here until we start clicking around. So you'll notice here is suggested tables. I click on table one, and you'll notice, just like that, I have all the content that I just showed you, but notice here how it's all broken out into a table. Very different structure than what we saw before. If I click on table two, Notice you're going to see here, there's some other tables on that website, but nothing that we're very interested in. But certainly at some point, you may have a website that has multiple tables and you may not want the first one. So it's worth just kind of clicking around. I'm going to go back to table one. And then if you look up on top here, you have two tabs. One is the table view. The other one is the web view. Now I like going to the web view because it gives me confirmation that this is in fact the content that I want. So it's really nice. It's showing you the actual website. So very cool. I click on table view and if we explore this data, you're going to see here, yeah, it's not so bad. It's got all the data, but notice here the column headings are not named appropriately. And also you can see here, I've got one dot and then the name of the movie, two dot, the name of the movie, etc. And that's not exactly what I want. And you'll see there's also a few other options here that I may not want to be included inside of my table. So on the lower right hand side, you're going to see this option to either load it and then it's going to bring it into Excel just like this or transform it. And the transforming then takes us to Power Query. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to very simply choose transform data and then just wait for it. It's going to do its thing, processing our query. And now we are currently and temporarily in Power Query Editor. Okay, so if we take a look at this, it's going to look very familiar, possibly like an Excel document, but a little bit different. So you'll see in my ribbon up on top here, I've got my home tab, I've got transform, and I've got a whole bunch of icons there. We're not going to get too deep into Power Query, but a lot of this stuff you will see is pretty intuitive once you get under the hood a little bit. On the right hand side, you have this option for applied steps. This is essentially showing you everything that you have done and allowing you to also undo and go back. Notice there is no undo option within Power Query. You undo very simply by clicking on these X's. So what I'm going to do now is fix this up a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is separate out this one from the name of the movie. I don't want these kind of sandwiched together. So all I have to do now is go to my home tab. I'm going to say split column. When I say split column, my first choice is by a delimiter. 
I choose that and essentially my delimiter is going to be this little dot the little dot after the number I have to just tell it hey you know what whenever you see that dot I need you to put what's next to that dot in its own separate column so now I just go ahead and type out my period and I'm pretty much good to go I'm gonna click OK and then wait for it to do its magic and you can see it found the dot and it separated it out that's beautiful now I could keep this right here absolutely and I can also keep this but you know what I don't really like the naming of this so very simply I need to change the column name so all I have to do is double click where it says column 1.1 and then just start typing I'm just gonna go ahead and type out ranking that's great and then for this one it's gonna type out movie name and for the rest of these they just kind of brought in some nonsense so I actually don't really need these so there was just some extra leftover null data so all I need to do is right click on it and you're gonna see here I can just choose remove I'll do the same thing for this one I'll just say remove and then for this one this is the IMDB rating so I'll go ahead and change that and this one is how many reviews it's actually gotten so I can keep that or not maybe I'll get rid of it inside of Excel but I'll just go ahead and change that this one of course is year made and this one is length and I'll go ahead and get rid of this one and this last column is rating now you may have noticed that as I started adding on different activities on the right hand side you can see here all my applied steps started to grow if I decided I didn't want any of these I can very simply just click on that X and it'll go back and undo that particular step but it won't affect any of these other ones so pretty neat so that's looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that so all I'm gonna do is very simply go over to here to close and load click on my little drop down and you're gonna see there is close and load and also close and load too if you want to be a little more precise and more particular about where you want to load it to but I'm gonna very simply just choose close and load and guess where it's gonna end up inside my Excel document so we'll just wait and you're gonna see that it's gonna be exactly how I've transformed it and comes in this nice little table love that that is beautiful now you'll notice here is table one and you can see I can actually see it there under my queries and connections and any change I want to make if I wanted to go back into my Power Query editor all I have to do is right click on there and then choose edit and wait and see I'm now back in the Power Query editor and I can go ahead and make some changes accordingly from here but I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and come right back to Excel Now, if I wanted to at this point maybe I wanted to see all the movies that were created in 1994 right or maybe I want to see all the movies that are over a certain length or all the movies that are rated R I can now convert this potentially into a pivot table maybe I wanted to group together all the R rated movies versus the PG 13 movies and I can make that into a pivot table to be able to create that So let's go ahead and do another one I'm gonna go over to here to sheet one and now this is going to be a separate sheet I'm going to do the same thing now but this time I'm going to link to Wikipedia so let's go ahead and copy that link first come over to here copy this go back to Excel and once again let's go to data from web and very simply just paste in that URL and you're going to see it's going to look pretty familiar from what we saw before but we're going to see a couple other nuances and we're going to learn a couple of other tricks with Power Query. Now, this is a very, very lengthy web page with a lot more content compared to that IMDb. So you can see here, this one actually has a name for the table, list of countries, and you can see there's lots of stuff going on here. And here's table one, even more stuff going on there. Okay, and then the list goes on and on. And notice there's a completely different one, but it looks like it might actually work for us, but there's a lot of null values in there. So we really want to study this before we commit to anything. So let's go back to this first one. And I'll go over here to web view, and then we'll be able to see it. Okay, that's looking great. I'm going to keep that one. And once again, I'm going to choose transform data. And now it's going to take me back to the Power Query Editor. And one thing that I'd like to change here is the fact that I do not really care about having this column, number one. And number two, it brings in the whole world population on that top row. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of this column. So I'm just gonna go and right click and say remove. And now what I'm gonna do next is just remove this first row. I'm gonna do that just by very simply saying remove rows, remove top rows. And it's gonna ask me how many rows do you wanna remove? And I'm just gonna say one and I click okay. 
And now notice, instead of the world being on top, it is now China. Now, some other things we might wanna do is take a look at the column heading type. You notice here is all my data formatting options. So this is ABC. So if I click on that ABC, it tells me here that this is in fact text. That's exactly what I want. My population is a number. So you can see here, I click on that one, two, three, and you can see here it is a whole number. Percent is percent, that's great. This is a date. Well, you know what? I might even want this, but notice I can, if I like to, change this to a date format if I like to, but you know what? It's not even relevant for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. And then I'm gonna remove this as well. And finally, one more, I'm going to remove this one. Now, don't be alarmed if you're not seeing all of your data when you come over to here, because sometimes it does truncate it, so don't be worried about that. All right, now, I'm pretty much good to go. I love this, I'm super happy with it. And I'm now going to very simply go back home. And now let's go ahead and choose the icon instead of the drop down. let it load right in there. And then notice here, I'm using the same data set within Excel and it's sharing both queries within one place. And that's a really nice thing to note that you can use one data set but have several queries feeding into the same data set. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna select everything in column B and let's now make this work for us so it's a little more readable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do some little commas there so I can actually read this a little bit better. I'm gonna make this so I have zero decimals at the end. I'm gonna make all of this into percentages and I'm just gonna go ahead and add on different decimals for this. Now, understand that I did all of that work within Power Query Editor, but I can still manipulate it within Excel just the same. So very powerful, very useful. And now any data that you see that's in a table online, you can access it and then import it into your Excel documents. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.